What's up, witches? It's me, Luna, here with an unboxing for you. And today's unboxing is a twofer. And I'm going to give you some uh, lessons learned. So what we're looking at today is the Universal Weight Tarot deck and its tiny version. And I mean tiny. First of all, <laughs> lessons learned. I went on a little kick of mini decks um, in recent months and I was thinking that mini decks are a great way to you know add decks to my collection that I really want but not spend as much money on them and I you know kind of like little miniature things you know I've got my little my little tiny if you haven't seen a live stream you need to oh oh I almost dropped I have my little tiny, 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 tiny red dye that we use. Um, at any rate, many things are fun. And the first one I bought was the Klimt deck mini. And right away realized that I want it in its regular format because it's such a beautiful deck and because mini decks are really difficult to shuffle. It read very well, so it's like if I really want to read from this deck, I'm going to need to get the regular size. Then I did the Tarot of the New Vision, another one. It's like another view of the Tarot. I don't really need this, in, but I'm finding out that the full um, size book has so much more information in it, and it's information that I really want for that deck. So I'm going to end up getting the full size version of that deck as well. Now with this one, I bought the Tiny Universal Weight, and I thought, oh, how fun. And then I tried to shoot an unboxing and it was impossible, absolutely impossible to get a setup that I could zoom in on that you could actually see these cards. It, 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 with lighting, it was a nightmare. So guess what? I bought the full size, but the real reason I bought the full size is because I did not know that Mary Hansen Roberts had done, a, had colored the Pamela Coleman Smith deck. I didn't know this existed. I'd heard of the Universal Weight Tarot, but I didn't know it was Mary Hansen Roberts. And you, if you've been watching me for a long time, then you probably know that the Hansen Roberts deck is the one that really launched me into my gifts of reading. And it is the deck that I read professionally with for 30 years. So I love Mary Hansen Roberts and I decided to go for this one. I, I'm conflicted here because I also would love to do um, a side-by-side -side with the with Mary Hansen Roberts coloring of this deck and Pixie Smith's because the the difference is just incredible maybe I'll do that as a separate thing just like a flip through um, and now a complaint before I really get started looking at this deck do you see the box is all kind of crunched and mushed um, this is because I purchased it from Amazon. It's even torn at that corner. I wish Amazon would not send things like this in bags instead of boxes because they get damaged and it's been sitting over here. I ordered it a while back and really hadn't looked at it to see that this was going on so it might be too late to complain to Amazon but I still may do it anyway. It's like you, you sent me something and it got damaged in shipping so you know send me a new one. Anyway, let's get going after that really long introduction um, and pull these decks out. So we have Universal Weight, U.S. Game Systems, of course, and I love U.S. Games um, codifying of their decks. You see this one? It's called UW78. Yeah, you don't need to see it. UW, Universal Weight 78. Very easy coding system. Draw drawings by Pamela Coleman Smith recolored by Mary Hansen Roberts. Um, this is copyright 1990 and 2004. So it was reissued in 2004 and we can see uh, some of the images here. And then we have the tiny version. So let me zoom you in and then I'm going to pull these out of their boxes. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is do the flip through with the big deck and then I will uh, read with the tiny one but let's pull them both out and I mean you see how small this box is 
that's how much smaller the deck is than the box. So, oh my. <laughs> Fun city, you guys. Okay, there's very difficult to handle. But, wow. All right, here are the backs of the two. So I'm assuming, I don't know um, if the original issue of this deck in, what did it say, 1990? I don't know if the original issue of this deck had the same, had this back on it. I'm curious. Do you have this deck um, pre-2004? And if you do, does it have this back on it? There's something on there. Okay. So there are the backs. Let's flip them over. Universal weight, tiny tarot. We've got the same image there. I mean, just impossibly small. And then we have a, um, an ad card for Pamela Coleman Smith, The Untold Story. And th this one, though, we have, and I have to get my little magnifier out because holy shit is this ridiculously tiny. Now, in the Hanson Roberts deck, um, you're just going to refuse, aren't you? Okay. In the Hanson Roberts deck, there is a blank card and it's not just an advertising card. It is someone standing, pulling a veil back and it says to all believers on it. And I love, love, love that blank card. I always use it, um, in the deck in readings, but this is not actually a blank card. Let's just see if we can get it to do there. Drawings by Pamela Coleman Smith, coloring by Mary Hanson Roberts, blah, blah, blah. But this could be used, you know, we do have two cards here that we can use for blocking cards. And here we have the fool first, and I put it there because this deck was not in order at all when I took it out of the box, so I had to reorder things, and boy, was that fun. Um, so we're just going to set these over here and, and go from here. So here's the magician, and the cards in this deck are ordered the way um, Arthur Edward Waite orders them in his book, The Pictorial Key to the Tarot. Um, you know what? I am going to go grab my other writer weight. Do... Looky, it's right here. <laughs> because I want to show you why I am so happy to have the full-size version of this deck in my collection now. So this is actually a threefer. <laughs> here is... Pamela Coleman Smith and then we have Mary Hanson Roberts look at the difference look at this the look how it goes from flat to dimensional so much softer in the coloring you know these cards don't have color shading they have color blocks and they've got some you know lines and things that provide shading and dimension here we've got um, kind of stripes that make it um, a darker red from orange, but, but it's kind of block colors. And just the difference between the two, to me, is stunning. Here's the High Priestess. I hope it's coming through clear. I'm still run, running my videos at a lower resolution because of my computer issues, but I think you can really see the difference here. Suddenly these columns are rounded and not just flat. There are a few that really stand out. Um, sometimes it looks at and you're thinking that can't be the same drawing, but it really is. It just, the, the change is so profound. Okay, I'm not going to go through this whole thing. I'm changing as we go. Thank you, Mercury. We're still on a Mercury retrograde, and holy shit, it's got me spinning, as you can tell. I hope you're doing better than I am. Um, I know that there's there are a couple cards in particular that I definitely want to show you. But I mean, it really looks like in a, a whole new deck. And sometimes you're wondering, are these really the same images? Yes, they are. They are the exact same line drawings. It's just the coloration that's different. Here's the Hierophant, the Lovers. So, you know, we're just 
seeing the difference in images. If you want full descriptions and stuff, you can go to my Rider weight unboxing. But um, look at that. So beautiful. It, to me, it makes them easier. Things are much easier to see. Here's the hermit. The, okay, Wheel of Fortune. This is one of them. I took this into my son and his partner and said, look at this. Now, they are both artists. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, look at this card. And then I showed them the recolored. And they were just like, whoa. I mean, it is so profoundly different. The clouds, suddenly you can see into the distance. And it becomes easier to see the bird and the angel because of the shading behind them. Amazing. There's Justice. The colors themselves are the same, so the red tights, the blue tunic, but the shading makes all the difference in the world. Look at that. Look at what's on the ground here. It's kind of a jumble. Over here, it's so much clearer. You can see that there's a king lying there with his crown. It's kind of hard to, to see that. Okay, here's Temperance. Here's the one. Check this out. Just massive difference. It's just so much clearer. Like I said, now you can see these people are standing in front. Of you you can, almost can't see the horns on their heads in this image. In this image, you clearly can. So this is going to bring me back into um, reaching for the Waite Smith deck. It's not one that I ever reached for. And from the beginning, from the very first um, deck that I owned, which was Waite Smith, the standard, um, I always found it kind of flat. And when I got the Hanson Roberts deck, it made all the difference in the world. So I'm, I'm going through that same transition and I'm loving it. Here's the tower. So we're just going to flip through pretty quickly here the moon I mean just the the light the shadow so much more dynamic so much more alive and there's the fool at the end of the major arcana which is where um, A.E. Wait puts it and some other decks do as well Here's the King of Wands, and then we go backwards through the suits. The King, the Queen, look at her little black cat. Okay, hold on. A couple things I want to take a look at here. Okay. It's so much calmer, too. And it's funny because these have more stark because there's that stark black like cross hatching for shading. And it's, you know, that could be like more dynamic because it's more black and white. But look at how much more dynamic this is just because it looks so much more three dimensional. So, okay, I'll shut up about that now and just do the flip through. <laughs> Here's the night the page. I'm, I feel like I am meeting this deck all over again. Because, I mean, it really does. I'm, I'm feeling the familiarity <clears throat> from my Hanson Roberts deck. The familiarity with the um, texture <clears throat> and the familiarity of the Wade Smith images. It's just amazing. Now we're into cups. King, the queen. Look at her robe. Hold up. Okay. Look at her robe in this. You d or the cloak. I never noticed that before, that it's kind of sea colors, but look at the, the just, and, and here, do you see how lost that little image at the base of the throne gets? Come on. 
there. Look here. You can see it so very clearly. I know I said I'd shut up about it, but when something new jumps out to me, I'm going to say something. And, you know, one of the things that I have found, even reading with the same deck professionally for so many years, sometimes I would do a reading for someone and there would be something in a card that I had never noticed before and it would jump out at me for that particular reading. So I'm looking forward to this deck because I'm already seeing things that did not ever stand out to me from the original. just so beautiful it's a much more artistic and you know I wonder if just the way things were printed back when the first one was produced um, dictated elements of style like using those just stark black lines and cross hatching for shading I wonder if they just weren't uh, capable of the kind of subtlety that this deck is showing. Hold on, I'm, as you can see, I'm not going to shut up about it. Oh, that's swords, wait. Yeah, I mean, they look so new to me that I'm wondering, it's like I have to sort of prove to myself over and over again that this is the same deck. Look at the Queen of Swords. Mm. The night. Yeah, so dynamic. You know, you really feel like they're within a landscape and not just pasted on a flat page. Some of them look very similar and, and you know, looking at them, it's like, yeah, yeah, that's the same old image. And then some of them just really smack me as a new image. The stained glass is very clear. The lines are so much more delicate, too. All right, let's look at the two. Even, you know, the lines on the outside of her garment are just finer, very much finer. Look at, you know, we've got perspective into the distance, but it doesn't look like it's distant. Here it does. It's magic. It really is. Oh, didn't want to do that, sorry. Okay. Mmm. Look how rich. And there, too, the sunset, the gradient there. Oh, it's just beautiful. That dark horse. Page. I'm very much looking forward to becoming friends with this standard imagery again and doing readings with it. Of course, I'm not doing readings professionally anymore, but we will certainly be seeing this on a live stream. And I mean, it's true. I The, the standard writer weight stays on my shelf. You know, I lost my original one. I don't know what happened to it. But, um, it, you know, it's just not one I ever reach for reading, but this one I will because I feel the vibe of my Hanson Roberts deck continuing in this, and I just really feel like it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. All right. Let's uh, take it back out. Okay, here's the book that comes with the full size. And the text here... Instructions excerpted from the Key to the Tarot by Arthur Edward Waite. So we have that introduction by Stuart Kaplan. So this is kind of exactly what you're going to find in, um, yeah, exact same intro, totally, Greater Arcana and their meanings. I'm expecting to find the same thing, but we want to verify. The Magician, much more readable text, first of all. Skill, diplomacy, mastery, yes, yes, exactly the same 
meanings. Um, let me see at the end of this book, do we give? Yes, we give a Celtic cross and in this one, the art of divination, we do a Celtic cross. And then we have this um, art of divination section. Is this one in here too? I wonder, I wonder. There's the Celtic cross. Okay, so here's something that isn't. Um, oh no, it is. It's the same thing, Art of Divination. It just tells um, how to read the Celtic cross spread. Okay, so we're going to set those aside. And I'm not going to shuffle them. Maybe I will, because I know it's going to shuffle like a U.S. games deck, and that's an amazing thing. It's, you know, that the consistency there is the best. But here we have the teeny tiny and let's look at what comes with this as far as a book we have a strip of paper and <laughs> hold on this copy uh, this complete 78 card tarot deck is divided into two sections the major and the minor blah blah so that's two paragraphs on that then we go through the cards. The Fool, Folly, Thoughtlessness, Extravagance, Frivolity, Immaturity. Let's compare that to here. Just to see how the content necessarily changes. Um, now, in this book, The Fool is at the end of the majors. In this list, it comes at the beginning. Uh, folly. Oh, we have different keywords. This says folly, mania, extravagance, intoxication, delirium, frenzy, berayment. Hmm. This says folly, thoughtlessness, extravagance, frivolity, and immaturity. Which thoughtlessness, frivolity, and immaturity are not keywords in this book. So this has some difference. That's very interesting to me. If my first question is, why? Why did we do that? I don't know. But let's now address how the fuck we shuffle these. And you know what? Let's light our charcoal and do our little double blessing today. <laughs> We're going to, oops, let me get these out of the way so I don't set the whole damn thing on fire. So I'd like to know how you guys feel about minis. I mean, how you feel about miniature things in general. There's such an appeal to them of, you know, just having a tiny version of something, whether it's a deck or a, you know, dollhouse or something like that. But um, I also want to know just what your experience is with miniature decks and what you think of them. So we're going to uh, purify and cleanse with air and fire. And then we are going to bless and manifest with water and earth. And then touch and touch and touch and touch. <laughs> and then we are going to cleanse clear with the bell. Let's just bring it this way. <laughs> oh my. And I notice on this too, we don't have reversed meanings. They just give a very short list of keywords, and in those keywords are like reverse kind of vibes, but we don't have specifically upright and reverse meanings. Now, this deck clearly, I'm not even going to attempt to shuffle it because the, the minis that are a larger size, you know, when you get something this small, how is that going to bend to shuffle? It's not and you're going to end up ruining, ruining the deck. And that's what I found out with the, the Klimt deck is, you know, if you try hard enough to do a riffle shuffle, you're going to bend the deck and damage it. So my son's partner, Bug, had a brilliant idea. She has another teeny weeny, like a little keychain Wait Smith deck um, to put it in a box and just shake it up. So that's what we're going to do here. And I think I'm going to do a full Celtic cross. Um, and uh, 
go through the meanings that are on this sheet. So I'm going to keep my magnifier <laughs> next to me. So let's ask, oh, hey, guides and guardians, allies and ancestors, thank you for muddling through this with me on a Mercury retrograde. Thank you for hanging out so patiently while I go through all my gyrations. <laughs> okay, and I offer you the fire of Azrael to bring the spirit of divination into this deck. Now, I don't even know if this shuffling is going to work. I mean, those are still in order. Hmm. Well, I'm just going to keep doing it then. I'm going to mix and flip and... Then I'm going to just reach in and pick, obviously. Some are going to be upright. Some are going to be reversed. Let's do this. Might need a bigger box to do it in or a tin or something, but we'll just keep doing it. So, of course, the question that I always ask on these test drive readings, and, you know, I think I, I, I don't know if I'm in the minority, but I watch a lot of other channels and I don't know if people routinely do test drives of new decks. I see flip throughs, I see reviews that talk about I've been using it and here's what I think, but an actual test drive on the video. And I do it because that's the whole point to me. I collect decks, yes, many decks I pick because I think they're beautiful, but ultimately I wanna know if I can get a reading out of it. And that's what fascinates me is the different qualities and types of readings that come out of different vehicles. So, okay, here we go. Um, does this, it does show you how to do a Celtic cross. So they really cram, we've got the 10 card spread, they cram 78 cards and how to do a reading into this itsky bitsky little piece of paper. Right, okay. So, I am going to do, um, follow this because it's bigger, and then I'll read the meanings from there. So, first one, Celtic Cross. And of course the question is, um, to make it broadly applicable across time, and amongst many people that are going to watch this, we want to know from where we are today, how do we move from survival mode into thriving? Into, you know, from being stuck, getting the bare minimum done, to really feeling like we're at the peak of our creative expression and living our purpose. We don't ask for much, do we? <laughs> but here we go. All right. So I'm going to reach in. I'm going to pick here for number one. <laughs> okay. Number one, we have the um, Six of Pentacles. And let's just read as we go along. Oh my God, do you see how tiny these are? So what am I going to do with these? I think I'm going to get myself a little tiny tin and just keep these in my purse. So I have a deck with me wherever I go. All right. Present position, current atmosphere, influences on the questioner. Let's zip down the pentacles here. Charity, philanthropy, gratification, generosity, kindness, and material gain. I mean, those all feel like upright meanings, right? And that's all the meanings we have. So I'm going to check real quick here. The reversed meanings in this book. Okay. Um, presence, gifts, gratification. No, wait, reverse. Desire, cupidity, envy, jealousy, illusion. So we just don't get reverse meanings here. Kind of a bummer, but that's okay. I usually read upright anyhow. If there's a reverse, I'll go to this book. So where are we at right now? Um, we're in a position of either giving or receiving generosity and charity. Um, so to me, that says if you need help, help is available for you resource-wise. If you are able to give help, that's what you're doing. All right, number two. And this one is immediate influence the nature of what lies just ahead. 
And here we have the Eight of Swords. Okay. Um, a lot of people in a Celtic cross, you rarely see me use a Celtic cross because I just don't use it to read. I, you know, I like things that are more fluid, but we're going with it here. Um, many times this card is read as a reverse because it's the crossing card. It's what crosses or may um, be blocking you at the current time or just opposing you. All right. Eight of Swords, Crisis, Conflict, Domination, Turmoil, Bad News, Criticism. So if I go intuitively, uh, Eight of Swords talks about a, a trap of your own making. And so um, we are in a position, sorry, it's getting a little warm. <laughs> we're in a position of, um, and Swords being air, we're talking about our thoughts. So we need to look at how our thoughts are opposing us or making us feel trapped in the situation that we're in. Now these two, the Six of Pentacles and the Eight of Swords, really do seem to be like not having anything to do with each other. But I would say um, if the, the current position here is talking about I need assistance or the, you know, the issue of having enough and needing extra, needing assistance, needing to rely on gifts, on uh, charity could be the state that we're in right now and the eight of swords says we need to look at how our thoughts are keeping us stuck in one way or another reversed here it says disquiet difficulty opposition accident treachery the unforeseen and fatality yikes i never realized it was that bad from old arthur so bad news, violent chagrin, crisis, censure, power and trammels, conflict, calumny, also sickness. Now that's not the way I read this card. So I'm going to go with my intuition and again say we've got ourselves in a bind somehow and we need to look at um, how we can let ourselves out of that bind mentally. This is very much coming on the heels of the two chart videos that I just shot so you might want to look at those two that would be the Libra ingress of the Sun start of fall season and Libra season and um, the Libra new moon charts okay next is position three goal or destiny and they put position three at the top so here this this deck does the card at the top first so we're going to put judgment at the top I'm going to lay all these out and we go around clockwise the moon ooh <laughs> ten of swords and three of swords both reversed those came out in my hand together all right so in the sky and that position says goal or destiny the ultimate goal or destiny of the questioner sometimes I look at that position of the best that can be expected in these circumstances or the highest hope which you're really hoping for judgment talks about big change change from within um, you know change across the board uh, this says determination outcome result decision promotion atonement so um, you know, determination, the outcome. There is a sense of inevitability about judgment because it depicts death. Everybody, no one here gets out alive, right? So the best that can be hoped for or what we're looking for here is for everything to change. We are looking for a complete change. Now, if we look at that position up there as being the goal, the other cards can start to tell us if that goal is realistic or not, okay? So, number four. Okay, hold up. I see a problem. It makes me sad. Now, this book, so this one says one, two, three, four, five, six, but it gives the number four card as the distant past foundation. That's not this position. 
this is the, yeah, so this is confusing. I'm going to go with the structure here, which means that this would be 3, 4, 5, and 6. Sorry, we're shifting gears here. So the fourth card is beneath you. It is his own that which we has to that which he has to work with and can use. Now, this says distant past, the events and influences which existed in the past and upon which the present events are based. So this is the foundation of the reading and we have the moon down here. So that says that the foundation is pretty slippery, that the foundation is an illusion or the foundation of this situation is based on a lie. So, wow. Moon in this book. I'm sorry, I'm back and forthing. I hope this isn't driving you insane. Disillusionment, scandal, false friends, obscurity, and error. Hidden enemies, danger, calumny, darkness, terror, deception, error. Instability, inconstancy, silence, lesser degrees of deception, and error. So the, the moon talks about things that are not available to our conscious mind. It's the underground stream. It's what's going on in the subconscious. It's hidden agendas. It's deception. And it stands for deception because you think about being out in the moonlight, you don't see things clearly. Things could be, you know, deceiving in appearance. So the foundation here is a deception or something that's hidden. Um, all right, and it can also talk about, because you look at this standard weight uh, definition, and it's talking a lot about danger and terror and darkness. And, um, you know, that to me says that fear is the foundation of the situation. So at the beginning here, we're like, I need help. I feel trapped. I want everything to change, hopefully, but that's an illusion. The foundation that everything is suddenly going to change is based in an illusion and also based in fear. Now, we have... <laughs> I want to say thank you to everybody for just hanging out with me at all. <laughs> all right. Um, then we have five. So three, four, five. And the five here is... Oh, this is interesting. Turn up the fifth card, place it on the side that the significator is looking away from. Well, we didn't use a significator. So this Celtic cross wants you to choose one of the court cards to signify the person that you're, you're reading for. So what I'm going to do is look at, you know, the, the main figure in this card is looking here. So it says where they're looking away from and say this is behind him. So this ends up being behind us. And it's Ten of Swords. I'm glad it's behind us because that's absolute ruin, right? Utter downfall. And this book says... What so... Oh, this is reversed. Advantage, profit, success favor, but none of these are permanent. Also power and authority. Okay, I want to look this one up here. Ten of Swords here says ruin, page, affliction, misfortune, mental anguish, and disappointment. But we're turning that upside down. So in the past, um, we are coming out of this sense of utter ruin and uh, what's behind us is success that was not permanent now what's ahead of us and this is kind of grim you guys but it is what it is I read them as they fall the sixth card on the side that the significator is facing this is before him current that is coming into action and will operate in the specific manner. Now the first six cards are now disposed in the form of a cross and the next four are turned out. Okay, blah, blah. We know that. Three of swords here. Absence, dispersion, sorrow, disappointment, strife. But we don't have reversed meanings. 
So if we come here for those, we get mental alienation, error, loss, distraction, disorder, and confusion. Upright is removal, absence, delay, division, rupture, dispersion, all that the design signifies naturally. So, I mean, let's take it at face value, broken heart, right? But we're turning this around as well. Mental alienation, distraction. So this can be kind of mentally checking out, I think, based on rough emotions going on in the past is what's ahead of us now. Let's go to the next ones. I want to dig here and take you. I want you right there. And we have the Knight of Cups reversed. I want you right... Oh, I've got this many. Let's see. And we've got the Ace of Cups reversed. And then we have the Fool. And then we have Temperance reversed. So those did mix pretty well, I would say. Okay. The seventh is you, your attitude, your relation to the matter. And we have Knight of Cups reversed. I just heard I have nothing more to give, nothing more to offer. Okay. Trickery, artifice, subtlety, swindling, duplicity, and fraud. Holy shit. And this is why I don't go with the old, old, old meanings because they have... We've evolved beyond those, I really feel. Um, challenge, inducement, proposal, attraction, arrival, opportunity. Hmm. Arrival, approach, sometimes that of a messenger, advances, proposition, demeanor, invitation, incitement. I'm going to go with what my intuition said right there, with I have nothing more to give. So where are we right now? We're feeling tapped out. And with this ten of swords behind us and three of swords ahead of us, reversed or upright, the reverse to me is saying Mercury retrograde, so that it's really hard to address these feelings on a practical matter. And these are swords, so it's mental. Mental anguish in the past or things that we planned that just did not play out. And then we've got more distraction and just mental hardship um, coming towards us. And this says, I have nothing left to offer. So we are feeling emotionally tapped out. When we look at the environment with the Ace of Cups, it's also reversed. So we are trying to pour water from an empty well. <sighs> False heart, mutation, instability, revolution. See, those don't mean anything to me, no matter how hard I try to pull this into a reading. So Arthur, we're not going with you. We're going with the deck. So again, the environment says, and let's just look at what they, you know, how they describe this category. <laughs> um, signifies his house, his environment in the affair, the influence, people, and events about them. As much as we want a fresh emotional start, we can't get one because we cannot draw water from an empty well. And those around us are tapped out too. So this is not the time to start you know, brand new uh, things that require an emotional investment. We don't have emotions to invest at this time. Now, the next one is hopes and fears, and we have the fool. How much clearer can it be that we just want a new start? We just want to start over again. And that's also a fear. Okay, folly, mania, extravagance, intoxication, delirium, frenzy, bereavement, that we, we want a new start, but we're fearful, you know, probably because of what we've just been through, that a new start is going to be not well-founded and going to be folly for us and going to be a bad new start. Then let's look at the outcome of temperance reversed. This is going back to the Venus-Neptune opposition that I'm talking about of being unable to um, know where the boundary lies on enough, you know, with doing pleasurable things. Okay, temperance reversed. Things connected with churches, religions, sects, the priesthood, also unfortunate combinations, disunion, and competing interests. 
I am looking at an upright. It says economy, moderation, frugality, management. We'll see reverse of that to me is not frugality, is going overboard. So the outcome here says that we really need to take care. We have in both the Libra ingress chart and the Libra new moon chart, we have Jupiter in Aries opposing the sun. And that means that we just go way, way, way overboard. You know, I see Kim and Jim Carrey going, somebody stop me. And temperance at the outcome here says that we may temporarily have the inability to temper our own behavior, our own thoughts, our own emotions. All right. We're tapped out. I feel it. I know you feel it too. Just if you look back over the last oh six years and who you were um, at the beginning of those six years, even who you were at the beginning of 2020 and how you were through 2020 to where you are now, um, what I feel for myself is just this, this sense that I've just been dampened down, dampened down. It's very difficult to generate good, usable emotional energy because our emotions are constantly under assault from what's going on in the world, what's going on in our country, how what's going on in the U.S. is affecting your country if you're not in the U.S. You know, all of these fears and they've just knocked our edges off and knocked our corners off to where we're um, feeling like a husk of our former selves. <clears throat> so the inability to kind of rein ourselves in and bring things into balance is what we're looking at. But you know what? I'm going to do another, just a, like a three card, and I'm going to do it with the big deck because I want a better answer for us, for the question of how do we start to thrive. And to me, the answer from that reading is to acknowledge where we're at, that we are not actually thriving right now, that we need some help from that six of pentacles, and that we need to look at where our thoughts are keeping us bound and gagged, you know? Um, we need to acknowledge that we're tapped out emotionally and do something to address that, giving ourselves, you know, some kind of break, um, doing some meditation, you know, slap on those headphones with the Kelly Howell binaural beat meditations. Um, we got to find a way to take care of ourselves. I think radical self-care is definitely on the menu. All right. About to put my candle out. And yes, sh shuffles just like a U.S. games deck. The best. All right. Three cards. That's all. I want three cards for how we go. Show us the way forward. Oh, please. Ooh, I just really bent a card. Fuck that. Okay. All right. Show us, please. There's number one. <laughs> There's number two. <laughs> All right. And they're flying out. Chariot came up first. All right. I'm also going to look at let's just do this <sighs> the world the hermit the chariot oh my god all right we've got the world on our shoulders right now we're feeling the burden the hermit says look at things from a higher perspective so the hermit talks about backing off from the, the fray, from, you know, dealing with everything. The world is everything all at once. It's also completion. So there's an indication here that a cycle is coming to completion. And, you know, the, the cycle that it's indicating there, I think, is Pluto through Capricorn. So something is coming to completion, but we're dealing with all of it all at once. And so rather than that, the hermit turns and sheds his light here and says, back up. Take some time in solitude. Take some time to let the world fall away and be just you in connection with spirit. And then we have the chariot next to it. Only you can take yourself there and you need to do it fast. Okay. You're in the driver's seat. You get to choose how much 
you're in the world and out of it. And I'm not talking about you completely checking out of things. I'm talking about taking uh, mental vacations however you can and making sure that they count, giving yourself that time and making it count. You know, sometimes I'll, I'll know, you know, I, oh, I need to get out and I'll go get in a tub or something. I'm going to relax and I'm in the tub. I'm going to read a book. Should I read a book? Should I watch a video? And it's like, just stop, stop, claim the time, be here now, be there with yourself, let everything else fall away. And then the strength card comes up to remind us that we have the ability, but what needs to happen is we've got to get ourselves in control first. We have to feel like we have a grip on our own selves, our own habits of thought, our own emotions, our own house. We just need to get our shit together and get control of ourselves in a calm way. Then we have the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords says the new beginning comes from what you cut away. Cut. And that's my interpretation, you know. Um, Ace of Swords, for a lot of people, can talk about just the truth of the matter, holding up the Sword of Truth, certainly a new beginning. Um, I'm going to look at what it says here. Triumph, the excessive degree in everything. Conquest, triumph of force, a card of great force in love as well as in hatred. Okay, so my interpretation of the Ace of Swords, though, it's an ace, so it means a beginning, and it means seeing things clearly and cutting away what no longer serves you. That's what the beginnings become, uh, or beginnings come from endings, from things that you consciously end. Then we have the Seven of Cups here. So one of the things that we need to consciously end is a lot of thinking that is not based in reality. All the what ifs. What if this happens? What if that happens? What if it, and also thinking about wonderful new things that could be happening that really just aren't based in reality. So with temperance um, in that last reading reversed, um, and this reading kind of rolling on from that, it's saying that we need to um, address what is illusionary both the good and the bad, you know, disaster head thinking as well as unrealistic optimism. We need to really pull ourselves in and get our feet on the ground. I want one more. Okay, and you give me a shit ton more. Well, I'm only going to look at the emperor here. The emperor says it's down to us. We are the ones that can make the decisions. We have the power over our own lives to decide where we want to go with things. Knight of Wands, get, go, 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 go. This can talk about taking a trip or just getting out of your accustomed context, um, something that's going to refresh you. The Hierophant talks about, look at this, getting away from the same old, same old and the dogma. And then King of Pentacles here says that we, you know, address our material needs. That's going back to that Six of Pentacles in the beginning. We're in charge of our resources, and if we need resources, we need to make that decision. So this card right here just says, make the decision. Divest yourself of carrying the weight of the world. Take some time in solitude. Get in the driver's seat in whatever way you can in your life. Put yourself in into a context that you have choice about. Operate within your sphere of influence. These are the things that I can actually do something about and get going on it. Get control of yourself gently, gently, and with love, loving kindness. The calmer you are inside, the calmer things get outside. Do some effective endings that will bring about a new beginning. Cut some things off, especially in the thinking realm, and make sure you're dealing in reality as far as where you're spending your emotional energy. And the thoughts that you generate generate emotions as well. So this is to look at what you're thinking that is causing emotions and make sure that you generate thoughts that are going to feed you emotionally rather than drain you. And the emperor says the decision is yours. So hell yes this deck reads <laughs> it's just really interesting what the small one was and this also says that i'm just not even going to fuck with the books on the on these uh 
you know, Pamela Coleman Smith decks anymore because the Arthur Edward Waite, we have evolved, at least I mentally, as far as being a reader, have evolved beyond his meanings. They don't pertain to me anymore. They're too um, disaster-y. I don't know how to say it. I don't know. So I'm not going to say it. So anyway, um, I hope you got something out of it. This has been a long ass video. So if you hung around for it, mwah, you have my my appreciation and my blessings. Um, if you really dug this, please hit the like button. That really helps me. And you can subscribe as well. There's a link below where you can purchase me a deck from my Amazon wish list. And if you do that, I will read for you. You can even send me a question. There are other ways to support the channel listed below. I thank you so much to all my patrons for your contributions and your support every month. It means more than you'll ever know. I will see you next time. And until then, this is Luna. Blessed be.